Now, something that I was looking at yesterday that I was really shocked by uh, was Cleveland Brown Stadium being packed with fans, one, and them actually being really happy. But, of course, you know that wasn't due to the Cleveland Browns. But, seriously, uh, it was the NFL's top 100 list and Lamar Jackson's placement. The reason I was surprised by it is for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, I was actually, the, the biggest, the, the most shocking part of the whole thing to me was that he was actually placed above Patrick Mahomes. Now, I know people are going to get on me. Oh, why do we think oh, you want everybody? And I get that, and I respect it. And, and please, of course, share your opinions. But what I think ended up happening to me, why it shocked me so much, is due to the me The media got me. They got me. They really did. Reason being is because I got so used to seeing Lists that rank all oh, the top QBs in the league And they got Patrick Mahomes at number one Then they'll have Lamar Jackson Sometimes two, sometimes three, four Sometimes even five But I, I got so used to seeing so many lists When it came to quarterbacks And Patrick Mahomes being number one And Lamar Jackson being somewhere underneath him Somewhere below him And I, I guess it like subconsciously like stuck in my mind Like that and, and I do think that, I still do think, and I've said it before plenty of times, that Patrick Mahomes, he is the best quarterback in the league. So I wouldn't think that that is wrong, that a, a list that has Patrick Mahomes at number one as a top QB in the league is wrong. But with the NFL top 100 list, that really took me for a surprise because Patrick Mahomes was at, what, number four? When he was at number four, I, I said, whoa, because going into the top 10, I fully expected him to be at number one. Even with Lamar Jackson having gotten the MVP, I just thought that people were going to be like, all right, Patrick Mahomes just won another Super Bowl, and this wasn't the best Chiefs team that they even ever had, and he still won. He's number one. He's got multiple Super Bowls now. I just really thought that they were going to have him listed at number one. But first off, he was at number four, and then second off, he was behind Lamar Jackson. Now, I know it's not necessarily best quarterbacks when it comes to this list. It's best players from the previous season. But still, I was like, oh, okay. And, and that really stood out to me. But then another shocker with that whole list was the fact that they put Tyreek Hill at number one. Now, y'all know, if y'all been on here for a while, y'all know I, I feel like Tyreek Hill is the best wide receiver in the game. The best. I know Justin Jefferson is nice. Like, I think Tyreek Hill is better than any receiver in the league right here, right now. I think he's more dangerous. He's more of a threat. I, I think you could put him on literally any team in any scheme, and he would straight kill it. He would destroy it. He makes your quarterback's job so much. Yeah, I could go on and on about Tyreek Hill, but... I was shocked that they actually put a wide receiver as the number one player in the NFL last year. Now, with that being said, Lamar Jackson was at number two, so he was behind Tyreek Hill. So this, like, I, it's, it's just so much that I was surprised at with this list because it's like, all right, if Lamar Jackson, you got him at number two, you got Patrick Mahomes, you got Lamar Jackson ahead of Patrick Mahomes, and Lamar Jackson did win the MVP, okay, cool. And then, but you got Tyreek Hill, Number one, ahead of Lamar Jackson. I was shocked by that, too, because it's like, how can... I know Tyreek Hill had a killer season last year. Went crazy with it last year. He did slow down. He, I know he got hurt, but he slowed down toward the end of the year and whatnot. But when, you, when I think about the best players in the league, yes, Tyreek Hill is definitely one of them, no doubt, in my mind. But to me, and this goes to the MVP uh, race as well, because remember, Tyreek Hill was part of the MVP race. But... To me, when you talk about the top 100 players, and obviously this is the top two players in the league, you talk about impact. In my opinion, you, you, you got to think about impact. Now, Tyreek Hill obviously impacted the Miami Dolphins in a major way. He helped Tua a lot. Tua done got paid because of Tyreek Hill. And not just Tyreek Hill, but Tyreek Hill was a big part of Tua getting paid. Now, Tyreek Hill done got paid by the Dolphins again just, I think, yesterday. But... You look at how great of a player he is and what he did for his team and how much he really helped his team out. He did help his team out a lot, but my pushback is like, all right, if you were bold enough to put Tyreek Hill at number one, that should have actually, in my opinion, it should have probably went to Lamar Jackson. 
It should have went to Lamar Jackson because when you talk about just straight up impact, impact, this is why, and we, we talk about this all the time. We talked about it so much last year with Lamar Jackson, his impact on the Baltimore Ravens is insane. The numbers, they never tell the whole story with Lamar Jackson. They never do, and they never will. Because when you look at stats, a lot of people like to bring up passing yards. All right, oh, Lamar Jackson only threw for X amount of passing yards. He only threw for X amount of touchdowns. He only rushed for X amount of touchdowns. But you, when you watch him play, and you watch literally everything that he does, it's crazy. I remember, and I will never forget because it stuck with me for so long, when we had uh, Coach DC on here from all 22 films. He does an amazing job, by the way. You already know. But when we had him on here, he brought up a, such a great point about Lamar Jackson. And he talked about how with Lamar, he has to have this certain level of stamina to do everything that he does. Not, and he wasn't even talking about it in his mind because that's, that's a whole other thing. But he's talking about physically, just the stamina that Lamar Jackson has to have to go out there and be the number one passer for the team, but also one of the top rushers for the team as well. Because we know Lamar Jackson gets it done for the Baltimore Ravens in so many different ways. So many different ways. So his impact is felt across the board like crazy. So, again, with the top 100 list, I was very surprised and shocked about a lot of different aspects of it but another thing that really just um i really appreciate it is the respect that lamar jackson is getting it's crazy because i, I feel like with lamar jack when you when you hit when you listen to media and again we all hear media we listen to media we watch it on whatever we watch it on but we hear media heads talk about lamar jackson and yeah it ain't you you, you hear a lot of crazy takes about Lamar Jackson even after literally every single thing that he has accomplished and so much more that he has still to accomplish but Lamar Jackson has done so much already in his short time in the league he's done a lot he's got so many awards he's always breaking records and whatnot but the way you hear people talk about him it's like really like they, a lot of people don't have respect for him but with Lamar Jackson when you hear media say one thing it's like okay but then this list, the NFL Top 100 list, it's not voted on by media. It's not voted on by fans. It's not even voted on by coaches. This list is voted on by players. It's voted on by people who literally go against Lamar Jackson. Not, on, not in the film room. Not calling plays, but the people that are actually on the field going against or playing with Lamar Jackson so the NFL top 100 list this list in my opinion it holds a different amount of weight than a lot of other lists would when you look at these lists again by media pundits by people on ESPN FF, the, the list goes on but when you look at those lists that's one thing those are and some of them some of them are guys that actually played the game some of them are guys that never played the game, but still respect people's opinion whether they played or not. I don't think that's the biggest of the big deal. It does make a difference now, especially the way that they look at stuff and the way that they analyze stuff. But this list that's actually by people that are putting on pads and are on the field in the league amongst the best of the best in the world, this it holds a lot more weight in my opinion. It's a lot more credible in my opinion. And the fact that... um. They put Lamar Jackson, and I know it's just based off of last year. It's obviously not based off of total accomplishments or whatnot, but that just stuck out so much to me that they put Lamar Jackson. I know it's about best players. It's not about team awards, but even still, I told y'all, like, the, the subconsciously, all these lists that we see with the top quarterbacks, they just they must have got in my head or something because I was just, I was just so surprised. And then I was so surprised that they put Lamar Jackson ahead of Patrick Mahomes. I, I was told you I was just shocked by that I really was but it, it, it's funny because I did see uh, a NFL a top 100 list that hey it's pretty accurate this little picture right here man this picture right here ooh, no way the boys been coming through for him and there was some crazy stat too that I also saw about Patrick Mahomes specifically where um 
he's had like the most interceptions called back since he came into the league. And I think it's 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 some crazy number, something like 53 interceptions called back, something like that. So basically, when he throws a pick, then the rest be like, oh no, it's pass interference, it's defensive holding, or that are that. It's some way, somehow, they call it back. And the next closest person to him, I think, was Josh Allen with, like, eight. It's like some crazy... You know what? Let me what, let me look it up real quick. A few moments later. Okay, see? It ain't even take too long. It, it took, like, 15 seconds for me to find it. I was pretty close. So, the stat is, since taking over as the Chiefs starter, Mahomes has had 53 interceptions called back by penalty. So, when Mahomes throws a pick, they're like, oh, no, it was a penalty. That interception doesn't count. But it says the next closest in that span is Josh Allen with seven. Ooh, so again, that picture that we put up earlier with the refs, hey, it ain't so far-fetched. So team, keep it clean before we proceed. Make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. It only takes less than half a second and it helps out the channel a whole lot. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn them notifications on. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Somebody else we love is Zay flowers now say flowers he's not eligible for an extension with the baltimore ravens yet he got a couple years to go but he did sign a contract extension in baltimore but what kind let's talk about it adam shafter reported today he said mnt bank which has the naming rights to raven stadium until 2030 now has signed baltimore standout wide receiver zay flowers to a multi-year partnership Flowers and M&T will promote a commitment to building financial success through in-person appearances and social media. Zay Flowers say M&T. Ravens can't do it yet. But M&T Bank cut the check. Literally, because they a bank. You get it? Something else that stuck out to me um, that I saw a couple of days ago was from Warren Sharp. And he put up some stats about Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens that really show that Derrick Henry coming to Baltimore, like he could really do some stuff with the Ravens that I don't think a lot of people realize. We've talked about it on here, but let's just go into it. It says uh, the Ravens don't rely on Lamar Jackson's rushing inside the five yard line because you would think all right lamar jackson this guy's at quarterback he's such a phenomenal runner when he got that ball in his hands he'd be going crazy with it he could make anybody miss and he could make so many plays which he can and all that is true so you would think all right when they get inside of five, oh yeah he got the ball in his hands he touches the ball every single play so yeah he, he no they don't but let's it says this for comparison 47 percent of the team's carries inside the five-yard line with the Eagles uh, that goes to Jalen Hurts. 40% of the team's carries inside the five-yard line with the Buffalo Bills, it goes to Josh Allen. Man, they, they call Lamar Jackson the running back. Get out of here. Anyway, it says 15% of the team's carries inside the five-yard line with the Baltimore Ravens, they, they go to Lamar Jackson. So only 15%. Those other numbers, 40%, 47% with Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen. Well, those guys don't ever get called running backs at all. And don't you normally, especially if you're on a five-yard line, you're supposed to hand it off to your running back? So I guess we got to start calling Jalen and Josh running backs. No, nah, I ain't going to do that. I ain't with all that. Anyway, um, it says Gus Edwards, who's now with the L.A. Ravens, uh, he says that he has 65% of the Baltimore Ravens carries inside the five-yard line last year. And he, this article talks about what it means for Derrick Henry and more. And that's something that we highlighted with, with Gus Edwards. Like, and it's something that I loved so much with the Baltimore Ravens last year because in previous years, we just were not used to that. They would get inside the 5, inside the 10, inside the red zone and within the 20. And they would just, they could start getting a little goofy. They could start getting just a little pretty. Start just doing too much. But Ravens last year, they said, we ain't doing that. We ain't playing around. We ain't doing all this silly stuff. No. Straight up, we're going to run straight at you, and we are going to score. We're going to hand it off to Gus Edwards. We're going to hand it off to the Justice Hill sometimes. We're going we're gonna to hand it off, and we are going to get into the end zone. We're not playing no games. Because, again, I think, what, 10 of Gus Edwards' 13 kick came with inside the five-yard line? I think the other three came like within this inside the tent, something like something crazy like that. But again, that just shows you with the Baltimore Ravens, and, and I said this a couple days ago on Bleacher Report when we were streaming, they did not truly value Gus Edwards like that. 
They didn't really value him as a number one running back. And he still got, what, 13 touchdowns last year, a lot from within inside the 10 and inside the five-yard line. But now with Derrick Henry, imagine, imagine this, a running back that, and, and remember the reports that were coming out all offseason. Oh, yeah, the Baltimore Ravens, they are looking for a running back with some pedigree. So they are basically saying that Baltimore Ravens are looking for a running back that has a resume, a running back that they actually respect to put on this roster and that they feel like can really carry the load. So they got that with Derrick Henry. So imagine with a running back that they didn't fully respect like that and didn't fully value like that and Gus Edwards and how he produced last, last year. Imagine a running back that they actually do respect and they do value and one that they are paying a decent amount of, not, 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 not too crazy this year, but a decent amount of money to this year in Derrick Henry. And imagine everything that he could possibly do for the Baltimore Ravens. But that's the thing. In, inside the five, inside the ten, I, I just feel like Derrick Henry going to go crazy there. But Derrick Henry, got, he got some stride too now. And they were talking about in practice yesterday. Thank goodness the Baltimore Ravens, I think they got today off because they've been just going hard. And I know it's so hot outside. Shout out to all of them. Whew, that's a lot of work. But with, they, they talked about how in practice yesterday, Derrick Henry broke off some long runs that would, they said at least two. They would have been home runs. But, of course, it's practice, so you got to chill out or not. But so Derrick Henry showing like, hey, he still got it, man. So with him being a home run hitter, him being able to come out and, and close it out uh, from the 5 or 10 yard, like Ravens can do so much with him. He makes them that much more powerful just based off of the fact alone that the Baltimore Ravens, they actually respect him.